Here we have a sample data insights, data sufficiency question format on the GMAT focus from an official practice exam over at MBA.com. Now, the way that you engage with a data sufficiency is you always begin by just writing a little K for what we know. And you want to articulate that information as mathematically as possible without engaging the individual conditions to start. So we begin if Jamal drove 240 kilometers. So we know that D for distance is equal to 240 km. Simple enough. Then we're asked, what was his average speed for the 240 kilometers that he drove? So we're just going to write S for speed equals question mark. And we box that off as what we're being asked to determine with the information from the conditions. Then we want to think about how we get to speed. Well, we know that distance is equal to rate or speed times time. So if I want to find the speed, what we need, and that's what you write down with our little N and a colon here, is going to be our distance of 240 divided by the total time it took. So we should be able to work through all of this rather Technically, we don't want to be plugging and chugging and guessing and checking for data sufficiencies. We want to be evaluating them as algebraically as possible when they're math based. So we're going to just write condition one here and we read Jamal's average speed for the first 160 kilometers that he drove was 64 kilometers per hour. Well, that means that 160 divided by 64, so the distance divided by the rate, is going to be the time for the first. 160 kilometers. And I am going to encourage you to use the tool provided by the exam. I've got a calculator. Remember to use it. We've got 160. We divide by 64 and we discover that it's a relatively easy time of 2.5. So the time for the first 160 km is just equal to two and a half hours. But that clearly does not tell me anything about the time for the second part. So that's not sufficient on its own. And we know that our options after condition one is not sufficient are going to be B, C, or E, meaning statement two alone is sufficient, meaning that together they're sufficient, but neither alone is sufficient, or they together are still not sufficient. So then we move on and evaluate condition two alone, which reads Jamal's average speed for the last 160 kilometers that he drove was 64 kilometers per hour. Well, we've already done the math, so we know that 160 divided by 64 is going to be equal to 2.5 hours for the last 160 kilometers. Hopefully you're enjoying the tips in this video, and if you are, please do like it and consider subscribing so you can get notified when additional videos are released by my guru. Additionally, check out the links down below because they can take you to this page where you can request a free consultation with an expert GMAT tutor such as myself, and they'll also show you where you can access our online self-paced prep course brought to you by my guru and analyst prep. And we should know already that that is not sufficient, which eliminates choice B. But then we've got to think about this critically for our combo. Because we've actually got 320 kilometers here, and we've got to think about what the implications of that would be. So if the middle overlap is equal to one hour, so meaning the middle 80 kilometers because there's an overlap. If we've got 160 and 160, that adds up to 320. 320 minus 240 is an overlap of 80. So if we've got an 80 kilometer overlap is one hour, well, then the total time is going to be equal to one hour plus one and a half hour for the first part plus one and a half hour for the last part, which is going to get me four hours. But if that middle 80 kilometer overlap was equal to two hours, which it certainly could be. Well, then it's just two hours plus a half hour for the beginning and a half hour for the end. The total time is going to be equal to three hours. So we've got two different possibilities and really a whole lot more than that even which means that the combo isn't sufficient either. And our correct answer is choice E. And hopefully you can see how by really doing this more technically, you're able to identify kind of the trap answer of C in this instance and get to the right one, which instead is choice E.